in uh, aid and humanitarian uh, action is just to mitigate the suffering of the, the people and try to find the basic uh, need for them. But uh, I think it is, as you said, it is very important to have political solution. It is not in Serbia, I mean, in everywhere, like in Syria or Yemen. I think we will continue having this kind of humanitarian aid if we don't have uh, the, the political solution. So the political solution it is very important, and we have to work, I mean, together to get this kind of the political solution. Thank you. The, um Rohingya babies uh, as well. We feel very strongly about all. We are a humanitarian agency and so um, just being born, you know, child survival is very important to us. Healthcare is important, the nutrition parents so that children can flourish and survive. So the answer is yes. To have a uh, stance that there is a safe and dignified return and there has to be the ability to be voluntary so that it is the, um, the ability of an individual here who is a Rohingya to be able to return safely. Uh, we have not created that situation as an international community, you are correct, but we are working privately and publicly uh, in all of the agencies in the United Nations to try to make this happen. And, and I think most are keen and they are wants to go back to uh, their homes, um, but they concern about the security and they said, okay, we want to go back home, but we we need to feel that we are secure in our uh, in our home. So, and this is what actually the, I mean, uh, the international committee trying to do. How can we bring the safe place so they can go back safely? Uh, a language uh, of Rohingyas themselves and English, not in Bangladesh, especially in relation to the providing textbooks. Uh, Indeed, and it's not just um, in uh, the camps for the Rohingya, it is uh, throughout the country and it's in a lot of countries around the world. So training of those teachers is extremely important and teachers with language <laughs> skills. Um, it's also important that we have curricula that match this. So just recently we have a new set of curricula programs. So math, science, language. And these days, one of the most sought after skills is digital skills. And for that, English is very helpful. So the learning of languages is important and the ability for teachers to speak the languages and to know their subjects is extremely important. And we need more teachers. This is back to the idea of education and skilling. And if we can begin uh, <coughs> preparing young people in their secondary school years to become teachers, it will be a great benefit. And this uh, uh, child should be given, and whether the world on the notion of birth identity. And birth identity allows a baby to have a name and to have uh, a birth date. It's very important to be able to then go to school and to live a life. It is also important to get a nationality, but at least the birth identity is a right that every child should have. Um, the whole option of what then happens with a family is a very complex issue because it is different under the laws of many countries. And UNICEF tries to work with every country on every issue. And I can tell you that for everyone, it is a unique solution. Yeah. Um, ex extremely important, uh, but at least in this particular case, I don't know enough about it to be able to come down clearly on, on what it is that would be the solution for it. Can we please move on to another As you know, uh, our world uh, is, um, it's difficult to find enough humanitarian funding for crises. We tend to be somewhere between 50% to 70% funded for any appeal for an emergency or humanitarian situation. And there are about 300 emergencies a year. 
as emergencies um, grow longer and more severe, the funding needs sustain and the people need it. So we look to public and private donors. We think that there is an enormous amount of outpouring of interest and sympathy for the humanity uh, and therefore it would be good the more foundations that know about this work, uh, it helps everyone. We work as a team, Save the Children, many of the nonprofit organizations. Uh, we were with BRAC yesterday. There are so many good international and national organizations and local organizations that are helping in the humanitarian space, but we all could use funding. So the generosity of the public, the generosity of the business sector, the generosity of foundations, it's really welcome. We need it. Yeah, if I can, may I have to think how can we act innovatively and how can we find an um, innovative solution to, to act? Because we almost get to the donor fatigue, or most of the member states and the donor, when we donor countries, when we visit them to just give them what the appeal that we have, they, they said, until <laughs> when we can, we can. Way, you know, so I think it is very important to get diversity of the donor, uh, private sector. Uh, I think they play a very, very crucial role in, in that case. Yeah. On everyone. So we focus um, on the Rohingya in, in Cox's Bazaar and we focus on the Bangladeshi people who are throughout the country. In Myanmar, we do the same. So we focus on the Rohingya that are in the Rakhine. We also focus on other minorities and other majorities that are within Myanmar. And um, the Rakhine is, as you know, a, a, a rural uh, setting. Um, it is, there are many of the families that are poor. The uh, Rakhine uh, Rohingya have uh, a lack of um, mobility, of access, so there are often camps Sometimes they are around villages, uh, but there is no ability to leave the camp. There are some schools that we are helping with to bring education so that young people don't miss out on any of them, but there is a fear for personal security and safety. Uh, one of the many gifts that you have given the Rohingya refugees here is that there is not the fear for personal safety. And that is, as you know, in your own life, in your own family, it is a deep-seated fear, and it will make almost any parent run away to try to keep their children safe. Yes, madam. Yeah. So for the, uh, as you know, the UNICEF part, there's also the sectors part of the equation, which is uh, coming to more than 300,000 children. So we're not the only ones working in this domain. Uh, I can give you the exact figures of exactly, exactly how many children we, we expect to reach uh, by the end of, the, of two thousand, uh, this year, by with the, the rest of the sector, education sector, uh, we have prepared a brochure on that, so I'll share it with you at the end of this meeting. But this is just to tell you in a nutshell, uh, yeah, just to make sure that uh, you understand that there are many issues to build and many issues to find the teachers, to train the teachers, and to make sure that we know also the different levels of the children and where to place them. Uh, Madame Fora has mentioned the different levels of a curriculum. This is also something you have to consider. When you have a child in front of you, you have to, first of all, assess him. Where does he fit in the, in the learning system, you know? Uh, because they have different backgrounds. Some of them, a lot of them came without too much education. So this is why it's important to make that initial assessment. Thank you. And what is We, we have specific for, uh, programs for orphans. As you know, an orphan for UNICEF is when both parents uh, are missing, not just one, as sometimes it is calculated in the context of Bangladesh. So yes, we have specific programs. Uh, we have programs to make sure that they have community help, that they can be uh, reintegrated into families which are accepting them, mostly in the community. Um, so these programs are ongoing. They have access to uh, education. They also have access to learning, uh, I mean, to uh, child-friendly spaces and other programs that UNICEF is putting together. The skills that you can learn, the age groups that can be there, and the involvement of girls. 
often we have many of the girls who drop out, uh, especially as they get older. So it is important that we try to reach all of them. With our partners, it's, a, it's not an easy number to find, but we'll find them. Well, as you know, in terms of protection, UNICEF is one of the players. Uh, we're doing our role with different organizations and with the different ministries of Bangladesh. Just starting now, um, it is also our intention that there be a wide variety of choices so that um, you'll be able to be a tailor or that you could um, learn how to repair a motor scooter or that you can um, have other skills. And then there are some um, interpersonal skills that are needed, communication and creativity, because a lot of the Rohingya as well as Bangladeshi youth are going to be entrepreneurs and that's going to be a very important part of their lives. So knowing how to start a business, where the possibilities are, and how to bring solutions to your own community. That's going to be very important for everyone.